All right, so we're going completely digital for Kinesiology 1018, and now our first lecture is going to be on nutrition. Okay, so bear with me with this digital format, but the rest of your um, lectures will be in this same format. Okay, I had you last class go through some common themes that you wanted to know, some different um, topics that you were interested in when it came to nutrition. I pulled out the common themes, I pulled out some of the things that were frequently asked. Um, a lot were about foods to gain muscle. We'll talk about some interesting things with that today. Um, fad diets, we'll go through all of those things like fasting, um, ketogenic diets, vegan diets, we'll go through all of that today. Um, how to maintain or start a program, different meal plans. I'm not going to give you exactly what to eat, but uh, we can go through some topics of things that you should consider. Uh, when it comes to planning your meals, um, how much you should consume, water, um, different amounts of calories based on your body, based on your size, based on your goals, um, some tricks to how to feel full, different amounts for carbs, fat, fats, proteins, um, but um, some good food, some sugar, but I really want to go over, there's no perfect diet, there's no ideal diet, there is just some general recommendations that I recommend um, follow as much as you can. You can't fit it all perfect. Um, if you try to be perfect, you're going to go over way too much stuff. If there's just some general guidelines. Follow those guidelines, you're going to be fine. Okay. Um, so talking about muscle gain, um, some general ideas. If you're trying to gain muscle, that's your goal, um, and you've never tried before, uh, you can look at somewhere around one and a half to two and a half pounds per month for men, and about 0.65 to one pounds of muscle for women. Um, and it changes as you become more advanced, as you continue to train, continue to train, continue to train. Um, it gets harder to gain more muscle in a shorter period of time. So just understand that you'll probably gain a lot of weight really quickly. And then it'll kind of taper off probably around 10 to 12 weeks. Um, that's when you need to start mixing things up, changing up your diet, um, change up what you're doing and what you're eating. Um, when we're looking at fat loss, I know fat loss is a big topic now. If you're really trying to lose fat um, and you're doing it aggressively, you're changing your calories and your activity level, you can look at about one to one and a half percent body weight per week. Um, so that's one to one and a half pounds if you weigh 150 pounds um, or two pounds if you weigh 200. Um, that's kind of a general guide. If you're doing it and you're doing it uh, very aggressively. Um, I recommend going comfortable somewhere around half a percent of your body weight per week. Um, normally it ends up around one pound is a good plus or minus goal to go for. Um, when we're talking about things to eat or how much to eat, um, depending on what you're doing, um, if you're training and you're trying to do a lot of training, say volume, you're running a lot, you're trying to improve your cardiovascular endurance, I recommend 25% of your calories from protein, 55% from carbohydrate, and 20% from fat. So look at all of the foods you eat, how much, and calculate it out. Uh, takes a little bit of math, but doing it right does help. Um, if you're just doing general resistance training, some endurance work, some conditioning, about 30% of calories from protein, 40 from carbohydrates, 30 from fats. Um, if you're really just strength training, you're not doing a lot of aerobic work, not a lot of endurance work, we can lower the carbohydrate intake, um, go about 35% from protein, 25% from carbohydrates, and 40% from fat. This means the amount of that macronutrient in calories. This is not 25% of your food should be protein rich, 55% carbohydrate rich, 20% fat rich. Um, we're going to go through the exact calorie amounts. This is in calories out of your total diet. So 25% of your calories should come from protein based calories. Okay. If we're looking at general protein intake, uh, my recommendation is one gram per pound of body weight is a good kind of baseline to go for. Okay. One gram per pound of body weight, so if you weigh 200 pounds, 200 grams per, of protein per day. It sounds like a lot. It's really not if you're really trying to maintain or gain muscle. <clears throat> and if you're trying to lose fat, we need to get all of the muscle that we can. Okay. You can go through some of those on your own. Um, some of your goals, but recommend one gram per pound of body weight regardless. Okay, regardless. 
Uh, if you're looking for some ideas for serving sizes um, for a protein, so think of like your meats or uh, uh, two eggs, one palm of protein, it, it measures out to about 20 grams of protein, 20 to 30, depending on your hand size. If you're bigger, you're gonna have a larger hand, but you're also going to consume more. If you're smaller, smaller hand, gonna consume more and you'll always have your hands with you. Um, for your vegetables, about a fist of vegetables, about a cupped hand of carbohydrates, which ends up being about half a cup, and then a thumb or about a tablespoon of fats. Um, vegetables, we're just going for a fist, just try to get a couple fists in whenever we're um, trying to put in our vegetables onto our plate. So compare your fist to your plate. Um, that'll give you, a, compare your palm with its thickness um, and size. Um, about two palms of protein gives you about 30 to 50 grams of protein, depending on the food you're eating. Um, if we're looking at kind of that, that general goal, vegetables are very calorie poor, nutrient rich. Um, so a cup of vegetables is normally somewhere under 50 calories. So we don't really worry about those too much. Um, we're looking more at those carbohydrates, those fats. Fats have a higher um, calorie content compared to carbohydrates compared to protein. So we don't have to consume as much to gain the same amount of calories. Okay. Um, you will have a chance to go through. Um, I recommend pausing, write down your notes now, and then we'll come back and go through nutrition in its full entirety. All right, so we're going to go through our entire lecture, going through nutrition. Uh, we're gonna go kind of fast, but you can stop. You can play through whatever you wanna do, um, how you wanna take over this lecture. If you wanna do it over a couple days, that's fine. Or you can take it all through in its all entirety. That's fine with me too. Um, but make sure that you turn in your assignments and post on the discussion board that I will have linked with this lecture on Blackboard. Okay, that will give you your attendance points, your participation points as we go into this new format. All right, so let's go through nutrition. Okay, go through some objectives. We're gonna talk about nutrition. We're gonna talk about how all this food goes through. We're gonna talk about different groups. Um, things to consider and going through preparing your food. So we'll talk about our, our essential nutrients first. Um, we have carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. These are our energy-based macronutrients. So I'm gonna say macronutrients, that's what I'm talking about, these three. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. So this is where our energy comes from. Vitamins and minerals help us with bodily processes. These are our micronutrients. Okay, smaller portions, Smaller necessity, these don't give us energy, but they help us metabolize our food, metabolize those macronutrients, and help with the mood function, organ function, um, or keeping us where we need to be. And then water is our forgotten macronutrient. Water is what makes up about 70% of us, and the more water we can take in to an extent, um, probably you should drink some more water. Okay, we'll talk about some, some recommendations for that later on. Okay. But how do we get all these macronutrients in? Okay, we start by our absorption. It's not about what you eat, it's about what your body can absorb. Okay, so most of that absorption comes in the small intestine. We are able to break down all of those macronutrients into their smallest forms. And as we spend time moving that food through our small intestine, we can start pulling those out into the bloodstream, send them out to the rest of the body. I'm not gonna go through all of that today. This isn't a kind of a biology lecture on digestion, but just make sure that you remember everything that we consume, we have to absorb in order for it to become a part of us and be part of our function. Okay, when it comes to calories, a calorie is our unit of energy for food. Um, we use kilocalories, so calories with a capital C is the same as kilocalories. Um, it's how much energy is necessary to move one liter of water up one degree Celsius. Okay, so that's our basic unit for a kilocalorie or a calorie with a capital C. Okay, um, most people need about 2,000 calories per day. That's why it's our general recommendations a 2,000 calorie diet. If you're bigger, you need more. If you move, you need more. If you don't move, you don't need as much. We calculated our resting metabolic rate. That's how many calories you use without physical activity involved. So it should be probably a little bit less than 2,000. And then as we move, we can add more and more calories. If we don't move as much, maybe we need to back off those calories, especially because what we take in compared to what we use determines the overall change in our body. If we 
move more than we consume, we will lose body mass. If we consume more than we move, we will gain body mass. Okay? Whether it's muscle or fat depends on what we eat, how much protein, how much carbohydrates, how much fat, and the type of movement that we're doing. Especially with resistance training, we'll gain more muscle mass compared to not moving and consuming more. Okay. If we look at each of these macronutrients and how many calories they have per gram, protein and carbohydrates have about four calories per gram. Fats have nine, so they have over twice as many calories, which means we don't have to consume as much to cons consume the same calorie number. Okay. So watch when we're looking at the fats. Remember we talked about a thumb of fat compared to a cupped hand of carbohydrates. This is going to be our kind of indicator. We don't need as much. We don't need as much. Okay. Protein first is going to be our major structure. This is what creates us. They say you are what you eat. It's from protein. Okay, so our muscles made from proteins, blood, bones, enzymes, our cells, hormones. It's a structure, it's a building block for structure within our body. We have to consume that protein in order to create those structures. Okay. The essential amino acids you see here, those nine, those are the ones we have to consume within our diet. We can create non-essential and conditionally non-essential amino acids within our body. We can't create the essential ones. So those are the ones we have to eat within our diet. Okay. Some foods have more, some foods have less, some foods have all, some foods don't. Okay. Some have just a piece. The ones we really need to watch out for are leucine. Okay, that's going to help us with improving or increasing muscle mass, but we need all of them. We need all of them. Okay. Some foods that have all of these amino acids, meats, poultry, fish, dairy products, eggs, um, soy, and certain combinations like beans and grains or um, legumes and grains. Okay, so think about like peanut butter and jelly. In a sandwich, that bread, the grains in a wheat bread, plus the peanut butter, gives us a complete essential amino acid profile. But remember, when we absorb these nutrients, we can absorb animal products, protein, faster and more effectively than we can from plant products. Okay, so the absorption is easier, so we don't have to consume as much to absorb the same amount. That's where it's difficult when it comes into more vegetarian, vegan-based diets when it gets to total protein intake. It's that absorption that really matters. Right, so plant sources, things like nuts, legumes, um, different vegetables, they don't supply us a full essential amino acid profile besides soy. Soy gives us all essential amino acids. Other combinations um, can also allow us to have kind of a um, full amino acid profile, but if we think about how we absorb those nutrients, we do have to have those in higher quantities than things like animal products. There's often more carbohydrate um, consumption with high plant consumption compared to um, higher animal products where you can have a more lean meat where you have less added um, fat and really next to no added carbohydrate. Okay. Our general recommendation for protein intake for general health is at least 0.8 grams per kilogram or about a third of a gram per pound generally. Uh, we want to be around one gram per pound. That's our, our kind of our guideline for building muscle. If you're losing weight, you need to gain muscle. If you're trying to gain muscle, you need at least one gram per pound to really have that optimal muscle protein synthesis so you can build your muscle the way you want to. If you're trying to lose weight, it's very difficult to overeat protein. It's very difficult for our body to store protein as adipose tissue. If you are doing any kind of exercise resistance training, maintaining that protein intake is going to be the best bet for long-term maintenance and health. Okay, if you want to get kind of your general idea of your calories per protein intake, say if you weigh 200 calories or you weigh 200 pounds and you consume one gram per pound, that's 200 grams of protein per day. 200 grams of protein at four calories per gram gives us 800 calories from protein. Okay, it's quite a bit right there. Um, sounds like a lot. It's what we really need for optimum health. The rest of your, um, especially if you're 200 pounds, the rest of your calories will come from other sources and you'll probably consume closer to 3,000 calories a day 
for optimal health. Okay. When it comes to our fats, fats are not the devil. Fats are good, we need fats, but they're about nine calories per gram, which means they're definitely more calorie rich than protein and carbohydrate. Okay, we need some essential fats. We'll talk about those essential fatty acids like EPA and DHA a little later. Um, two kinds of fats that we'll really look at are saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats are solid at room temperature and they often come from animal products. Okay, coming from animal products, um, and we want about 10% of our total calories from saturated fats, the other 10 to 20% from unsaturated fatty acid sources, often plant fats, uh, avocado, olive oil, options for that. They're often liquid at room temperature, uh, better options for us from plant fats compared to animal fats, uh, if we can really avoid them. Okay, with trans fats, avoid them as much as you can. Uh, most, most of the American diet has no trans fats now. Uh, used to have a little bit more, but if you see hydrogenated oils, hydrogenated, hydrogenated, that means they're adding back in hydrogens that shouldn't be there. They're really creating a more stable um, unsaturated fat, which gives it a longer shelf life. Probably not the best for us to consume, and we also see it's linked with a lot of health con concerns. When we go to cholesterol, cholesterol, we've heard like bad cholesterol, good cholesterol, how much should you have, what should you have. What, the cholesterol you eat will not really affect the cholesterol that your body produces. Um, we want to have a good ratio between our low density or bad cholesterols and our high density lipoproteins are good cholesterols. Uh, bad cholesterols are only bad because if we have too many, there's a problem. Uh, low density lipoproteins help us to transport fats to other organs so they can use it for energy. High density lipoproteins help us pick up and bring those low density lipoproteins, LDLs, back to the liver so that they can be metabolized, so that we can do this process over and over. If we don't have enough good cholesterol, we can't get our low density lipoproteins out and they'll often stay and stick in our blood vessels. Okay, if we want them to stay out, we want to avoid plaques, things like that. We want to have a good ratio between the two that comes from eating quality foods okay, and moving, exercise, move, 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 move. Um, hopefully you found a way to exercise in some way, shape or form at your home or you're getting so bored that you just do it anyway. Um, do it right now, pause, do 10 push-ups, 10 squats, 10 lunges, and then get back to whatever you're doing. All right. So with our guidelines, um, we want to lower saturated fat is our best bet. 10% of your calories per day from saturated fats is going to put you in a good round, a good nice number, something that you should have. Okay, um, So calculate that out for whatever it needs to be. Moving past fats onto carbohydrates, carbohydrates are also not the devil, as much people try to say right now. Um, carbohydrates give us energy. Our brain and our nervous system only function on carbohydrates. So, might as well eat them. If we're, we're not gonna, our body's not gonna metabolize that much fat into carbohydrates. We need to consume at least some in our diet. <coughs> we have simple carbohydrates like monosaccharides and disaccharides. Glucose is the simplest form of sugar. It's a form that our body breaks it down into. Fructose comes in mostly fruits, it's metabolized in our liver, galactose comes from milk, sucrose, table sugar, maltose, and lactose, lactose comes from milk. Um, complex carbohydrates are where we really want to get most of those calories from. We want to avoid as many simple carbohydrates as we can in most scenarios. Okay, um, So our complex carbohydrates come from most starches like grains, legumes, tubers, so um, things like whole grain bread, um, beans, um, rice and tubers like potatoes, sweet potatoes, things like that, um, have a more difficult time in our body digesting it, digest slower, okay, which means that we release those carbohydrates over a longer period of time. There's less of a spike. Uh, they also have more fiber. More fiber, we're going to talk about in a little bit, how it helps our gastrointestinal system function optimally. Okay, so adding in fruits, fruits are going to have more simple carbohydrates, but they have a higher fiber, so it's that give and take right there. All right, so with these complex carbohydrates, all of this fiber, a complex carbohydrates slow digestion. 
Okay, so it allows us to break down those carbohydrates slower as we release glucose slower into our body. Glucose makes up like our blood sugar. Okay, with the livers and muscles, they take up that glucose, store it as glycogen, and use it for energy. Okay, muscles are fueled most often through glucose or glycogen, especially as we exercise, especially as we move for long durations um, and try to move intensely. Um, after we're done exercising, our body still has to resynthesize glycogen, remake that glycogen. So it will take your stored adipose tissue or carbohydrates that are floating within our body and resynthesize that, remake it. Okay, so if we limit our calories a little bit, we move a little bit more, we're going to lose weight as, well, as long as we're consuming less calories than we move um, in total. Okay, with refined or whole grains, okay, complex carbohydrates, refined grains, um, we want to stick to whole grains or whole foods. Okay, whole foods are foods that look si more similar towards what they would look like on a farm compared to what they look like in a factory. Okay, if it looks like someone broke it down, if it looks like those Fruit Loops, okay, you can't find Fruit Loops at the farm. Okay, something like oatmeal, probably a better option. Comparing whole grain bread to white bread, you can tell there's a difference. Okay, if it's more of a whole food, something like a whole fruit compared to a fruit candy, okay, fruit, better option. There's more nutrients within a whole food than a refined food. Okay, refined grains have less nutrients, less fiber, less vitamins, less minerals. Even if they're fortified with them, they don't have the same amount. Okay, we need to consume more whole foods so we have more nutrients per calorie. The more nutrients we're consuming with those calories, the better quality of the food that we're eating. Okay, whole grains, they take us longer to chew and digest. It's going to take us more time to absorb all of those nutrients, and it will give us more opportunity to absorb those nutrients within our intestines, which is the goal is absorbing these nutrients um, throughout the time that we have that food in our body. Okay, if we consume more whole grains, it's also linked to a reduced risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancers, gastrointestinal issues, um, things like colon cancer, there are more benefits than drawbacks when it comes to whole grains. They may not be as sweet and tasty, but better option, better option. Okay, That sweet and tasty comes from mostly from added sugars. The American diet has about 200 to 300 extra calories coming strictly from sugar, and they're called empty calories because there's no added nutrients or fiber, but they're still calories. Okay, Think about that 300 calories is a lot coming from a source that has no nutrients. Okay, 300 calories and then some even more. Just check the food you're eating, see what sugar, um, see how much added sugar and just try to decrease that added sugar as much as we can. Most often we'll get it in a beverage or sweets or snacks. We often drink our extra calories. Okay, so if you can limit, if you can cut back on just sugary drinks, okay, that Starbucks that you've been drinking, um, those sodas, okay, I love soda, but something you have to watch out for when it comes to total intake. Okay, if you just limit it once per week, you're limiting 52 more sodas throughout the year, it's going to make a long-term difference. If you want something sugary, have a whole fruit. Okay, you have an apple, an orange, something like that. It's going to give you those vitamins and minerals and that sugar you're craving. Okay. When it comes to that fiber, why it's so important, it's not digestible. <coughs> But that, di that non-digestible food allows to improve fecal bulk, okay, that solidify your poops, okay, and helps to slow motion of our foods through our intestinal tract so we have more time to quality absorb food. Okay, those soluble fibers are viscous fibers, things like oats and legumes, beans, slow digestion. And then insoluble fibers like wheat, um, seeds have more fecal bulk components, so it, it puts everything together and helps us push it on through. We don't want to leave too much stuff in our digestive tract. We want to let it move out and slowly move out, but move all the way out. Okay. Um, if you don't have very solid poops, pay attention to your poops. Okay. You're probably not getting enough fiber. Most people don't get enough fiber. Okay. Functional fiber um, is added to foods through like a supplement, like a fiber one bar. Just make sure that you're, if you're taking a fiber supplement, 
don't just ramp up the fiber right away. Do it slowly, progressively, and slowly. Um, it's better to get that fiber from a whole food than from a dietary supplement. Okay. Some sources of fiber, fruits, uh, beans or legumes, oats, um, barley or wheat. Um, a lot of packaged foods have less fiber because it, it makes it a little bit more palatable, a little bit more sweet and tasty. Um, try to incorporate more fiber options into your diet. Okay. Fiber is one of those kind of non-digestible, non-calorie non dense pieces when it comes to our food that we're consuming. And vitamins or other micronutrients fall into that same category where it doesn't give us energy, but we still need to consume them. So we have four fat soluble and nine water soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins don't need to consume as much because we store them easily within our body. Water soluble vitamins we lose through excretion, through urination. So we need to consume them more regularly in regular quantities. Okay. So I talked about that these vitamins or these micronutrients are not going to give us energy but they're necessary. How they're necessary is because they help to allow chemical reactions like metabolism to occur within our body. Okay, so some, some vitamins also help with nerve function, some with skeletal function, immune function. Um, things like antioxidants help us to reduce free radicals, um, improve the function of our cells themselves as they go through metabolism and have byproducts for that. So we want to include as many of these vitamins and minerals in our diet as we can within the recommended amounts. Okay. Um, most of the time we can get most of our vitamins we need if we consume a variety of foods, especially fruits, vegetables, grains. And when you're having those vegetables, add in some reds, some yellows, some purples, some greens. Diversify the colors. If everything is green, it's still not as good as it could be. If everything's purple, if everything's orange, mix and match those colors, those yellows, reds, orange, purple, and green, and try to eat the rainbow as much as you can with your fruits and vegetables. Okay? Different colors indicate that they have different amounts of each vitamin, mineral, antioxidant. So allow a variety throughout the week, it's going to improve your overall quality of food. Okay. Some individuals do have vitamin deficiencies. Okay. Um, most of those come from not consuming a diverse diet, but depending on how we cook the food, some vitamins are easily gained through cooking or more available through cooking. Some are lost and destroyed. So if you're only eating cooked vegetables, still not as good as it could be. If you're only eating raw vegetables, still not as good as it could be. Mix and match, have some raw, some cooked, and do a little bit of research into the food you're eating. Look into it, look into different recipes, different options to optimize your food. You do have to do a little bit of work, but it's for your life. Make your work your work. Okay. Um, with the minerals, uh, minerals, we do need them in small quantities. There are other micronutrients. Um, we have 17 essentials, but the major ones we need are calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and chlorine. If you're having a diverse foods with both animal and non-animal plant and animal products, and you're consuming a diverse food group throughout the week, you're probably going to be okay. Um, if you're missing or you have too much, there could be another issue. Um, especially females, iron deficiencies are very common, if you, especially if you don't consume red meat. Um, that's where we have a lot of bioavailable iron. Um, I recommend an iron supplement if you don't consume red meat. My fiance doesn't consume red meat. She has to have a vitamin supplement or a mineral supplement with iron to help optimize her function. Okay, so I make sure she stays on that too. Um, calcium, magnesium, potassium help us with structure as well as function with our muscles, uh, muscles and our bones. So. Make sure you're getting enough. Um, things like MyFitnessPal are a great way to track and make sure that you're at least hitting some of those quantities and trying. Um, I don't recommend going straight to a vitamin mineral supplement. We'll talk about supplements in a little bit. Okay, with water, you're mostly comprised of water. If you consume most regular foods, you're going to get water as long as you're thirsty. Whenever you're thirsty, drink some water. Um, if your urine is very dark, drink some water. Um, it's a pretty easy way to go through. 
but I recommend having a glass of water in the morning, glass of water at night, and then as you're thirsty throughout the day. After you exercise, however many pounds you lose directly after exercise should be the amount of ounces of water that you should drink. So if you lose one pound, 16 ounces of water. Two pounds, 32 ounces of water directly after exercise to replenish because having that adequate water intake is going to help with refueling your body, allowing better metabolism, better out, allowing you to function optimally, especially in a dehydrated, if you're just in a dehydrated state. Okay. Um, some of our food does come from the food, or some of our water comes from the food that we drink. Um, think about pasta, you boil it in water, and then it adds some more volume, same with rice, same with most of our grains. So as long as you are drinking when you eat and then having some thirst, you're going to be fine. Um, if you consume other foods or you don't consume enough water, just try to add it in um, throughout the day. And it's going to help with your overall function. I talked about antioxidants a little bit earlier. Um, antioxidants help us to improve cell function um, by stopping and picking up hydrogens that are being exposed throughout the body. It's as we metabolize food, as we create energy, as our cells function, they have some problems. Okay? Some byproducts come out, um, same like exhaust in your car. Free radicals help pick that up and take it away so that it can repair and allow our cells to function optimally. Okay? Foods that are very colorful, okay? think about berries, vegetables, um, fruits, have more antioxidants. Phytochemicals are similar to antioxidants in that they help us prevent disease. Um, things like um, sulforaphane, which is in broccoli, um, can help with carcinogens, um, getting them out of the body. It's just another component of food that doesn't give us energy but helps with our function. Um, with supplementation, supplements are there to add to what we're not getting in our balanced nutritious diet okay you watch out for different vitamins you consume uh, if you have a physician or a dietitian ask them which one is best um, the less supplements you can consume the better um, only consume supplements when necessary okay maybe you don't get enough of that type of macronutrient or, or micronutrient or macronutrient especially with protein uh, only if you need it. It should be kind of the cherry on top of your whole nutrition plan. So how do you make that plan? Um, we have guidelines. Um, you can go to things like my plate and that can help you structure your food. Um, I can't give you exactly what you should do, but I give you some ideas of how much in that little introduction. Um, I recommend starting with planning how much protein you need to consume and filling in the carbohydrates and fats to meet your total activity requirements. Uh, that's a good kind of way to go. Um, when it comes to those vitamins and minerals, it's not more is better, it's enough is enough. Um, we have recommended amounts. Um, you can go through those, you can look them up. A uh, magic thing called Google um, really helps with that. Um, just kind of fall into that good zone. You can look um, here on the screen. There's some that's recommended. There's the upper limits. Just fall in between there. Um, just get enough, get the adequate intake, something that is going to help you rather than trying to overshoot. Um, things like vitamin A, you can definitely overshoot and it can cause some definite health problems. You can look up all of those on your own. Um, we won't spend that time doing that now. Um, with those daily values, things that you see on a nutrition label, um, that daily value is based on the percentage of a 2,000 calorie diet. So if you're in athletics, probably not going to fit your amounts. I would recommend looking at the exact grams and how many calories per gram for each macronutrient to get your recommended amount. Okay, just do the other work on the back end. It's going to be better for you in the long term. Um, so make sure, especially if you need to consume something like 4,000 calories a day, you need to double that as your percent daily value. Um, pay attention to the amount in the serving. Um, and that's going to help you structure your entire plan th using things like MyFitnessPal. Uh, the app, I recommend getting it, downloading it, trying it at least for a couple days. Um, it's gonna help you with that whole process. Um, we do wanna follow some general 
healthy recommendations, um, our general uh, USA recommendations, um, have an eating or a healthy eating pattern, diverse foods, different colors, uh, mix up your colors, mix up your different meat sources, protein sources, um, have some more nutrient dense foods, um, try to limit calories from added sugar, um, consume healthier foods, especially beverages, and then um, long term maintenance of healthy um, food choices. Uh, the sooner you start healthy food choices and the longer you go, the better overall outcome. And then if you're planning to have children, developing good eating habits young can help foster good habits, especially as you age. Um, so start to, by building a healthy pattern for yourself. Um, some ideas, less than 10% of your calories from added sugars, less than 10% of your calories from saturated fat, um, less than 2300 milligrams of sodium per day, especially if you have special con conditions. If you're an athlete, don't worry about it um, for other reasons. But if you have health concerns, watch your sodium. It's going to cause more water retention. If you consume alcohol, do it in moderation and then consume water with it also. Um, it can cause dehydration. Um, you're going to urinate a lot more out than your body is planning to. Um, consume water if you're going to also consume alcohol. Um, and then only if you're, if you're of legal drinking age. Um, avoid it and consume in moderation if you do choose to, to consume it. Um, if we have more general healthy eating, eating patterns, it's going to help us in the long run. Most Americans don't meet physical activity guidelines. Um, that number up there is probably much higher than it actually is. Uh, but that's what your book says. Uh, but most people don't meet the physical activity guidelines. If you consume more than you move and you're not moving, okay, this is when we see a lot of those chronic diseases start to develop. Um, my plate is a great place to start in creating your foods, um, or you could use my little uh, hand guide. Um, uh, that's from Precision Nutrition. Uh, that hand guide, if you have about two of each of those for a man and then uh, one of each of those for a woman every time you have a meal, probably a good guideline for you. Uh, because that hand guideline, um, I can kind of give you an idea. A palm is about three ounces. We use that for proteins. Um, three ounces of protein is going to give you about 20 grams. Um, one ounce of most meat products has about six to eight grams of protein. So there's your little hint right there um, in that whole serving size amount. So an ounce of meat, seven grams of protein. Uh, that's a good guideline for that. Um, I'll post up some stuff on that too. Um, when it comes to vegetables, fruits, vegetables, it should make up most of your plate. Okay, just two, at least two fifths of vegetables per meal. If you don't at one meal, add another one or two for your next meal. Um, we want to get a diverse, different. Add some colors. Add up the colors. If it's just, it's good to eat your greens, but it's good to eat your oranges and yellows and purples and reds and all of those too, uh, because whole fruits. Uh, they're going to be lower in calories than things like fruit juices or fruit flavors. Um, they're going to be higher in total fiber. They're going to make you feel full sooner, so you're less likely to overconsume. Um, with grains, we want to get about six ounces per day, maybe more depending on your body size. Um, think about a cupped handful, six cupped handfuls of a grain per day is probably a good guideline. Um, at most. Um, for proteins, um, mix and match your different protein sources and then I recommend choosing lean meats before um, higher fat meats. Um, so even though higher fat meats may taste a little bit better, maybe you diversify it, have some lean, some fatty, and go as you go. Um, and then try to have more plant proteins, incorporate them into your total servings. Things like beans and rice, great option. Oils fall into that um, unsaturated fat category. Uh, vegetable oils, um, olive oils, great places to start. Um, your food label can help you with those different types of fats. Uh, you wanna really make sure that we're paying attention, not trying to do anything perfect, but pay attention to what you're consuming. Um, compared to solid fats, we wanna consume more in that oil or liquid fat form. Um, and making better beverage choices, choosing foods that are maybe lower in sugar, lower in saturated fats, 
more often. It doesn't mean every single time, but it means more often. Okay. If you plan on using some kind of variation of a vegetarian, vegan, um, partial, semi, um, vegetarian diet, just pay attention to what you're eating. If you have a vegan diet, which you don't consume any animal products at all, maybe even more restricted, you're going to have to pay more attention to what you eat in order to gain the right amount of macronutrients and micronutrients. Okay, it's easier with a omnivore diet or having animal and plant sources together. I'll just I'll be straight with you. It's easier to do it that way. If for some reason you want to go through a vegan or vegetarian diet, maybe it's for um, ethical reasons, idealistic reasons, religious reasons, that's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but plan, make sense of what you're going to do, and be prepared to have to modify more foods and plan your foods out uh, more diligently uh, compared to someone with more omnivore diet. Uh, when it comes to functional foods, functional foods are fortified with other vitamins, minerals, things like iodized salt. Uh, if you don't get enough iodine in your diet, you're going to see some major issues. Uh, most people get enough iodine, especially in California, um, but add an iodized salt rather than regular salt. It's You're not going to taste iodine. Um, Things like milk with vitamin D. If you don't go outside a lot, make sure you get enough vitamin D. I know you guys might be tucked inside. Go in the yard, go outside, get some sun. Um, your body or creates, synthesizes vitamin D through exposure to the sun. So 30 minutes of sunlight a day is recommended for the minimum to get enough vitamin D. If you're not, you need to get it from food sources somewhere. Okay. So how do we make more informed choices? Okay. Pay attention to your food label. Okay. If something says light, low fat, high fiber, it does have to meet some certain requirements. Um, but if they have to really fight for those requirements, it's probably not going to be the best food in total. Um, whole foods often don't have a package, don't have a nutrition label. It's going to be a better option in most cases. Okay. Um, if you go to a restaurant, you want to know what's in there. My fitness pal has almost every restaurant on there. Uh, so you can just use that. You can look online or they have to show it to you. So you can ask for those um, individual uh, calories or, but just know they're making the food, it's not you, so you don't have full control. Uh, I do recommend making your own food as often as you can. Um, with supplements, most of them are not regulated on their um, composition. Um, so I recommend picking more reputable sources um, things like informed choice if you look up informed choice um, they certify that uh, it's a third party service that um, certifies that supplements have in them what they say is in there uh, so if it's on the informed choice list it's probably a better option than just the random supplements you see um, on the shelf okay um, we do want to limit large doses of supplements um, if you're going to have those Flintstone vitamins or those gummy vitamins, just have one a day. Uh, you don't need more. More is not better. It's enough is correct. Uh, you want to just have that total amount. If you can get more from Whole Foods, even better. You don't have to add in supplements. Um, whole Foods first. Um, for food additives, most of them are there to maintain their freshness or to allow it to taste better or look better. Um, just pay attention to what's in the food. Um, check through it. Check through it. Um, if it stays in your house long, like it doesn't go bad very quickly, it probably has some additives in it. Uh, foods that go bad quicker, uh, like within a week, within a couple weeks, are often more whole foods or more real foods that we want to consume. So uh, I know it means you have to go to the store more often. Uh, I hate it, but they're going to be better quality foods for you. Um, Foodborne illnesses are a little bit more common than you may think. Um, most of the time when you guys say that, oh, I had food poisoning, okay, most of the time it's uh, not real, but if it is, uh, it is not fun. Uh, it often causes nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, things like that. We want to avoid it as much as we can. It often comes from raw or undercooked animal products or poorly prepared or contaminated foods. Okay, so we want to avoid um, contaminating our foods, especially uh, if you use a cutting board. Um, cuts your fruits and vegetables on one cutting board, meats on another, don't intermix them. Um, 
it's going to contaminate the foods, especially if there's some way that, especially foods like poultry, um, don't want to mix them until they're cooked or unless you're cooked or until you're cooking them. Um, the CDC estimates there's quite a few, like 3,000 deaths from foodborne illnesses um, within the United States per year. It's a lot, it's more than it should be. Um, prepare your food well if you're going to buy food. Make sure that the person you're buying it from is preparing it well. They're not rubbing their hands and face and then touching your food. Sounds counterintuitive, but pay attention. Um, we want better quality food. We also have to prepare it quality. Wash your hands before you touch meat. Wash your hands after you touch meat. Um, wash your hands before you touch your vegetables. Wash your vegetables and then cook them, then cut them, do whatever else you're going to do, but wash your hands and wash the food. Um, rinse it off at least, rub it through, um, and then go on with your day. Um, don't wash your meat, but um, different meat products or animal products, um, but wash your hands first if you're going to touch them. Uh, wash your utensils also. Um, things that cause foodborne illnesses are unclean hands, unclean food surfaces. Uh, make sure any surface is cleaned before you put some kind of raw food on it and clean it after the raw food. It's more work, but pay attention, you'd be surprised. Um, if you're uh, buying your food, um, put a bag around the meats, put a bag around your vegetables, and just don't let them intermix. You never know what could seep in where or what's going on with the food that you're eating. Make sure that the packaging is there if there's a packaging. Um, and take care of your food. Um, prepare it to a safe level, and then put foods in the refrigerator, especially if they're perishable. It's going to help them last a little bit longer, um, especially if you don't want to go to the store all the time. Um, so keep them cold um, and then cook them in a reasonable time period. Um, if you see any mold or things like that, throw it out, get something new. Uh, if you're treating a foodborne illness, you should probably continue to wash your hands regularly, drink more fluid, especially if you have nausea or diarrhea or something like that. You need to consume more because you are going to dehydrate. It's going to slow your recovery if you're not hydrated well enough. Um, dehydration um, impairs your immune system. Okay, But if you are also having a food board illness and you live with others, maybe you have to cook for them, wash your hands more frequently, cover your mouth, cover your face. Um, you don't want to spread that food board illness to other people. They don't want all of your illness also. Um, last, when it comes to organic foods, organic foods... Um, don't mean they're healthier, um, but they are grown without pesticides. They um, are a little bit better for the environment in general, but they also cost more. So if you're on a budget, it's okay to not be organic. Uh, if you have the option, why not? Um, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have genetically modified parts um, in most cases, uh, but it is free of contamination from pesticides and things like that, uh, which often means it's a better food better production for long-term sustainability within the environment, right? Um, it is better for the environment in general compared to mass farming like um, more genetically modified foods. Uh, but if you're consuming more vegetables, even if they're not organic, but you're consuming more, that's already a betterment for you. Um, I know it's difficult right now, but maybe now you have more time to cook. Uh, so play with a few new recipes, try some different foods. Uh, I'll talk to you all. Uh, next time next week uh, when I post up the next lecture um, but I do need you to go in and create your lab 8 and make sure you submit your lab 7 uh, by the end of the week um, by Friday on Blackboard. Um, lab 8 will be due in a couple weeks uh, but you're assessing your own diet preparing your own foods um, just try to track all your foods as well as you can it's gonna be difficult it's gonna be hard you might not feel good about all of your choices but I recommend get my fitness pal. It's free um, on the app stores. Um, and then plug in all your information and start tracking your food and then use that to uh, create your lab 8.2 and submit that digitally on Blackboard um, as soon as you can. I think it's due in a couple weeks. Um, check the due dates. All right, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me through this entire lecture, but uh, I hope you're feeling well. And I hope you're enjoying your uh, quarantine time. All right. Thank you.